Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about the noise levels of the WD Red series of hard drives. We want to look at just how much noise these drives generate. We're going to take them out of a NAS environment and we're trying to isolate as much of the background noise as possible so we can identify these drives but a few things straight off the bat a few disclaimers if you will if you've already caught my other videos where we've done audio testing most of this you will know but if you if you have and you want to skip a couple of minutes knock yourself out but for the rest of you let's get through the disclaimers first and foremost we are using a wd red 4tb standard class hard drive but this is the wd40 efrx that is the cmr or conventional magnetic recording version of WD Red. This is the pre DMSMR whole thing that happened a while ago. This is one of the four TBs before Plus came along and the rest of it. And a number of you still utilize these drives. They're still available in a number of places, even though the model IDs have changed in a number of areas. Now, a lot of people go for the CMR drives, not only because of uh, long term benefits compared with shingle magnetic recording or SMR, but also because of the smaller amount of cache and the smaller amount of basically architecture compared with the uh, support of SMR and the way it has to keep things moving, the result is these can actually be quite quiet drives. So today we want to find out how much noise this generates. So in order to do that, we are utilizing a few things. First and foremost, we're only using the one drive. Obviously, the more drives you have in arrayed array, the more larger the vibrations and the general noise it makes and also in those larger arrays they get more and more industrial they get more metal they have more cooling systems and fans and all that ambient noise goes up so we want to identify the noise of just the one drive in order to do that we've got all of this equipment laid out here in front of me i'm talking to you via my small uh, minor mic here samson mic here in the corner uh, also in the corner there just off camera you can see just here if i stretch out far enough um that microphone there is going to pick up the general noise of this hard drive when we run some activities on it. And finally, we have this mic here, which is connected to this dB sensor that you can see on the left-hand side of your screen. Now, we are not going to be using thousands of pounds worth of equipment. This is going to be some general testing. Depending on the success of these, I might go in and go into this in a far more forensic level later on in another video. And also when we look at the larger bulk uh, NAS hard drive storage arrays. But... We have to tinker with the sensitivity of this mic because at the moment the sensitivity we're getting is not going to be enough to identify the noise spikes on this drive. So the first thing we're going to do is go nice and quiet. And as you can see we're getting a registered dB there of around 25 to late 20s, maybe even pipping into the 30s with the background noise and any traffic out the window down on the pedestrian ground level. So what we're going to do if we go for the measurement there, so we'll go quiet again. You can see that we're living at that whisper quiet room, a kind of rustling leaf sort of level. So what we're going to do is head in here and now we're going to change the calibration to minus 25. And what that will allow us to do is remove a lot of that background and allow us to listen far more intrinsically and see visually the spikes on that drive. So if we go quiet again, we can see it's gone down a lot lower. That will help us identify the spikes of the drive noise a lot more over the surrounding ambient noise. Now, these measurements aren't precise. They are by no means registered numbers there. We are only looking for the difference between ambient and the drive spike noise. Secondly, when we install this drive, we're using it inside this Sabrent uh, USB 3 external dock. The reason being, one, we need it to be outside of a NAS because we don't want the NAS's fans to be involved, and also we want a system that's quiet. This one bay has got no internal fan and almost no electronic background hum. So if we turn it on, so we'll listen quietly, then turn it on, It barely registers on the scale, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to take this drive. I've already attached it as an external drive um, on my system, at least. So we won't have to muck around with things like uh, Storage Manager. And I have already used Disk Part and removed all any data that's on it and just made it nice and clean and ready to go. I've tested loads and loads of drives on here so far. So we're going to get this plugged in. We're going to turn off that mic. We're going to get the drive ready. And the first thing we want to listen to is the spin-up. 
Now, the spin-up noise of a drive is very, very important. The spin-up noise, particularly with enterprise-class drives, can often be where the main noise is. Because spin-up isn't just when the drive's working for the first time. A lot of the time, it's indicative of the noise difference between idle and active very, very quickly. So what I'm going to do is go very, very quiet, and then we're going to boot this drive up. Just to listen to it for 15 to 30 seconds. You ready? Let's go. So very, very low indeed. We've used these exact settings on a number of larger than 8TB and Pro Series drives, and it has always broken into the double digits. Let's try listen again. Very, very low noise indeed. Now, we will be doing tests on populated drives, drives that are at 50 to 70% filled and RAID testing later on. So before you get angry in the comments and bung that down there, that is going to come. But it's easier to do the empty drives first and obviously we move through all of these stages. So now we've got the drive added. The next thing we want to do is do some general sort of mid-range read-write activity. We're going to use AJA, uh, the performance benchmark software. We're going to run a 4 gig test file, which is going to take it in turns to read and write that 4 gig test file onto the disk. Uh, we've got no background disk caching enabled. It's going to be a continuous run. And we're doing this, one, to see a little bit of that read-write performance, which again isn't going to be breathtaking um, on this drive. It's got a very small amount of cache. It's quite an old drive. I believe 2017 um, was when this variant of drive came onto the market. So if we go ahead and click Start, We'll find out about the noise level during this turn-based read and write activity, starting with write. Let's go. We're going to restart that there because some car out the back of this window decided that was the time to beat, beat. Welcome to England, ladies and gentlemen. Let's try that again. So again, not exactly earth-shattering performance. We should see higher numbers in the read, but what we want to listen out for now is the switch between write and read activity. That's generally a good area of noise in bigger drives. So let's listen. Almost completely unnoticeable. Let's listen. Very quiet noise. We're still picking up noise out the window. Let's listen for the switch. And almost imperceptible. Very, very quiet. And again, this is what we'd expect from a drive at 4TB. Much, you know, lesser, uh, you know, hardware inside. Fewer clatters compared with some of those enterprise drives. Not so much like the Barracuda we'll test soon, which is a 14TB Pro series. But for now... Let's listen one last time for it switching between the write and the read. So overall, again, we're seeing the performance we kind of expected. That 117, right? For these older gen drives, I think they were rated at tops at 125, 130. Uh, but the read's still at 175. Pretty good. Listen to that switch. Very small. Almost can barely hear it. So let's end this testing now. And now we're going to make our way into some direct read-write activity. So we'll go in. We can see that drive appeared because we've already, already added it before. So... What we do, to, uh, just like the other tests that we've done, we go into this SSD here. This is a SATA SSD. I'm going to copy it. It's filled with system files, uh, WMVs from uh, an archive of videos that I do, and a lot of recordings of Mischief Movie Night. Again, recommend it. Check it out, guys. Unbelievable. Great stuff. Um, so go ahead, click copy. We then go into uh, our external drive. From there, 
we're going to go ahead and open the folder create a new folder and from here we're going to copy that data onto we're not going to wait for the entire 240 odd gig to copy over one minute to move that there so we can see each other um we're not going to wait for the entire 240 odd gig to copy over but what we're going to do is just leave it running uh, for a minute or two just to see the activity on the system with this consistent write action um and again as we go through this i will uh keep it a little bit quiet for a little while and just notice the noise level before we switch to uh, a more variable read write action so let's be quiet and listen to this activity Now, short of some fantastically irritating background noise there that cropped up with a motorbike there, I think generally we can work out the noise level of this driving operation is still fantastically low. But so, unfortunately, is that performance. And again, a much older class of drive, this is a more standard class drive, the performance isn't going to be fantastic, particularly when we're dealing with very, very large files here, lots of media files at 1, 2, and even 3 gig, and ISOs, some of which are 8 or even 10 gig each in scale along with a system vm image of 25 gig the result is this is not a drive that is designed with its smaller cache and smaller operation to be able to handle those files and maintain those high speeds we're seeing consistent speeds um just pipping into the hundreds but then constantly dipping lower than that into the 70s and 80s as well um, we're going to let this run for a little bit longer and then we're going to commit our simultaneous read and write activity let's leave it for a bit longer And that should just about do that. So let's stop that action there. Next thing we're going to do is copy that data. Let's see how much there is. We have 14 gig of data to play with. And in this next activity, we're going to be copying that data that we've written onto the drive and pasting it back onto the drive. Consequently, this is going to be an operation with both simultaneous read and write. And this is a drive that's really going to struggle with an operation like this. When you are committing read and write actions within the same disk, anyone that's ever tried to copy and paste on an old hard drive piece, uh, old hard drive based PC, and you're doing multiple at once, it generally slows the entire system down, largely because hard drives unlike SSD are not designed for high level IOPS and high level interchanges happening simultaneously within their storage media. In a RAID array, if you have multiple disks, very different story with the performance benefits that they bring same goes for ssd or if you're using ssd caching but in a single drive we're not really going to judge this drive too harshly on performance because it is going to be terrible i reckon 30 to 60 meg on average um, it's probably going to start high and then just go down from there what we're listening for is the noise of the arm over the platters as it consistently switches between those read and write actions internally. So let's go ahead and get ready. Wait until the uh, noise of a bus outside goes by. What a consistent environment. Sorry, I wasted second, seven seconds of your life there. Let's go. Three, two, one, go.
so very quiet compared to the Enterprise disc we've used before. And even the performance has surprised me a little bit, despite its rather modest amount of cash. It is still hitting that 60 meg quite consistently. I think we're probably averaging somewhere at the 50s, maybe 52, 53 megs if we're lucky. Um, but right now that noise level is what really impresses me. And again, because of the lack of that Enterprise architecture internally, we're definitely seeing an improved performance. So once again, let's go quiet for a little bit and listen to that drive. So what we're going to do now is we're now going to cease this operation. So we want to notice the difference just till we keep our sense of relativity. We're now going to stop this operation and power down the drive. I'm going to do it quite unsafely, quite abruptly. So don't do this at home. It can damage your hard drive and the data inside. But what we want to hear is now, just for our own sense of hearing, the difference with and without the drive running at all. I'm not going to wait for that car to go by. Unbelievable. And now. And we're right back where we were earlier with the drive noise being almost non-existent as it spins down slowly and we're back to that ambient surrounding noise there. So again, that gives you a good understanding about the noise being generated by that drive. And even in large scale environments of two, four and eight bays, this is still gonna be a very quiet drive by comparison. So what we're gonna do now is power the drive back on for the last time so we can hear the drive running. Definitely one of the quietest drives we've featured in our noise testing. And again, that is the WD Red CMR generation of drives, comparable to that of the Red Plus. It's still an incredibly affordable drive, it gives you 4 TB of storage. It may not give you performance that will blow your socks off, but definitely a quieter drive compared with most. And the more audio sensitive user out there may well want to consider it. But this has been our audio and light performance testing of the WD Red. 4TB drive. Um, if you do want to learn more, do let us know in the comments. Click like if you've enjoyed the video to help me understand whether I should continue this series. And of course, to learn more, click subscribe so you become uh, more involved and more aware of all of these drives as we test them. We're going through about 18 drives here. We've gone through about eight of them so far. So again, we've got plenty more to go through. And if you've got any recommendations, not just those new Synologies or some of the more enterprise grade drives, we've got an Ultrastar in there as well. Do let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to wrap things up and I'll see you next time.